Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about about C plus plus twenty six contracts. It's a language feature of C plus plus. Someone asked me here about blockchain contracts, not not related. It's a C plus plus feature, and it's going to be in twenty six. Not optimistic. We are going to bring it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to talk about what the what the target of contracts is, about the syntax a bit. I'm going to show you the contracts are everywhere. If you want it or not, they are there. And the contract facility to just take all these contracts that are implicitly there and just put them into code. We see it. We'll talk about narrow and wide contracts and contract violation results in undefined behavior. Also, we'll see that what happens when we um, the contract is violated, the con con contract violation handler. Contract facil facility it takes you know, undefined behavior and makes it well defined. We are going to get into all of this in the, into deeper in a minute. We'll talk about uh, controlling contracts, semantics, enforce, observe, ignore. And um, we we'll see that we are not allowed to change anything inside the contract. And we'll talk about a bit about side effects, what happens when you invoke a contract is happening and whatever. Okay. Virtual function, an issue which is going to be discussed tomorrow. At SG21, we'll talk about it a bit. And if we have time, we'll talk about point contact handlers and my efforts in this direction. Don't oh, know. Said like this. I think you need to focus the thing. Oh. No. You have a direction? Yeah. Okay, briefly what we are not going to talk because contract is a huge issue. Okay. I'm not going to talk about the history of contracts. I'm not going to talk about the standardization process, but in private, just ask me, it's a fascinating issue. Um, future non-MVP, MVP is the most viable product, but contracts is going to be extended a lot after 26, for 29, for probably for 32, we will get more features. It's an ongoing uh, facility that will be, um, but I'm not going to talk about it. During the building of this uh, facility, there are many design design decisions that we need to take. I'm not going to take up to talk about them and how we get to where we get. Sorry. Zoom is hard. What? Zoom is hard. Zoom is hard. Zoom is hard. Corner cases, mechanical details. Uh, Godblot online examples, you can get into Godblot and Godblot and just write this and you'll get contracts. Uh, there's the implementation and you can just try it yourself. I'm not going to be there in this uh, talk. I'm not, talk about, I'm not going to talk about what static analysis can do with contract, which is a lot. And I'm not going to mention the, okay. Telecos <laughs> one. <laughs> but if you have a question about the Telecos one, I'd be happy to talk about it if you have it there. Focus. Focus. Yeah, okay, so let's dive in. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so contracts, the old, the old target of contracts is to find bugs at runtime. You don't get any shiny feature to do things fast. You don't get any things to make your code look prettier. It's just a new tool to help you find bugs during runtime. That's all the feature does for you. And if you have no bugs in your code, like me, you can, <laughs> you can go and listen to this talk because that's the entire target of this facility is to find bugs. It's important, very important to distinguish between bugs and errors. 
Okay, errors is something that we can handle inside the code. I have an error, I can see the value, I can see whatever it is and just continue running and, and continue the execution of the program and by handling the error. Bugs are not handled, handled by code, simply a bug. So if, simply something that we need to take, take a look at the code and fix it. We need to talk to the developer, we need to do something and just change the code the way we, we run it. We, we are not handling bugs. The question? Yes. yes. Can, can it be used by the compiler for optimizations? For optimization, not very. Relying on the, on the contract assumptions that if the contract is great, there are not assumptions. We don't have assumptions at all. He said it's not wrong. Have the <laughs> you, you said violating contract is a different behavior, which is another say, way of saying yes, it can be liable. When, when As you said it's only for debugging or, or avoiding bugs, so it might be that it is a bit. More than that. Yeah, post, like post MVP, there's a new keyword, and we saw enforce, ignore, and uh, observe. There's another one is you, and the compiler will be able so, to use this. You, once you um, say something in the contract which is not, which is violated, then you are in undefined behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's go, go, let's go into the, into the contract yeah. itself. Yes. But but it's not observable. Yet. Let's let's continue. Yeah, let's continue. Okay, let's yeah. continue. Now you'll see through the talk some things like me against SG twenty one, which uh, most fights I I lose, but it doesn't matter. I still still do my right. You don't have bugs. <laughs> yeah. So there's uh, and I'll get into it later. I hope at the end, the very last slides. But um, for me, contracts should not. Uh, you should not be able to continue execution of the program once a, a contract was violated. For SD21, including Brian Sarstow, uh, Beata Sarstow and other people, they say, no, we have to go execute, go do the execution. We are not allowed to stop. And, and contracts, it's the same. Whatever happened, I want to continue execution. Uh, it's not my opinion. You are allowed to stop. You want to force this. Yes. Yeah, we're allowed to stop it to force to stop. And I want to force to stop. stop like I want to force to, to force stop and not disabling the ability to continue. That's what I want. Okay. So the syntax in the nutshell of contract, it's a new syntax, it's a language feature, as we as I said. And uh, without knowing much, you can see it's very clear. It's this one called the natural syntax. You have a function in this example, foo, that returns double and gets an int. And you say my pre, which is the shortened for precondition, means I expect the value of x to be greater than zero in this example. And I'll repeat it a few times. If you get an, an x which is less than zero or equal to zero, the function can't work. It's not something to handle, not to fix. Simply, the function cannot work. Doesn't know what to do, just it's a bug. We've seen it through the talk a few times. And also we have the post, which means the post condition, I promise you, but at the end, the return value will be less than X in this example that I wrote here. So it's the post condition that must hold when the function ends normally. Okay, if the function throws, something else, if the, jump, the function does a long jump, something else, but if it ends normally, you get a, the post the condition. Way, the form. I'm not sure because X is copied. It has to be cons. Yeah, it's cons. No, it has to be explicitly cons. No, it's okay because it's used in the uh, post. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, you, you can copy you copy the x in the beginning of the function, but you will not get in any details into it. This talk it's very very introduction. There are lots of details that I'm not going to talk about. These code version of the same language. of what d the language. No, no, I'm not not familiar with d at all. Has has essentially the same thing. But it's not an, a new concept in programming at all. But, it's why yes, it's, nobody uses it. Nobody uses it then. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if you if you noticed, we have the, the precondition, the postcondition in the declaration of the function itself. So it means that someone from the outside, without knowing what the function is that is doing or how it's being written, can see the precondition and the postcondition. In the definition itself, if you like to, you can replace your C assert, the, the assert, with the contract assert, which is a new keyword, and do the, effectively the same. Just say, in this 
example, X must be greater than J at this point of the code. Otherwise, it's a contract violation. It's a bug. You don't know what to do. And the contract violation will be handled. We'll see later. Any? Yeah. How yeah. is that different than the usual assert? Because the usual assert is essentially the same. It's the same. Assume. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. I mean, yeah, like I have more options. The, okay. the, the target is to make it a, a, a replaceable for, for CSF, for current CSF. Okay. The one major uh, thing that you cannot uh, just uh, uh, define it, just remove it, like I said. If, if you take a set and you don't define any bug, just vent from the code normally. So here you cannot do it. And okay. the ODR use. And of course, in, if you, you you have any bug, you can write here inside it. And if it's CSS, you can write inside whatever you want, like a story or whatever you want, you can vanish anyway. Here you cannot do it. It must be called valid code. Extension on top of a cert. It's a more wider feature that cert is yeah. like. Strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, when C++ moved to static assert, it, the, the, the language realized that it's a good idea to have an explanation stream next to it. Yes. Is that available here? No, it is fine. I know. I don't think that it's an uh, explanation here. Because <laughs> I, I didn't see it. And when did you see any, any idea to have an explanation for the contract set? Or even for the pre and the post. But you don't have to, we'll see later on, because one, when you violated the, the, the contract, just, good things happen. Okay, you will know what was violated. Okay, we'll see it later. And if you just write, just write the message itself. Yeah, yeah it was message with them there. It's possible. Fix, but uh, it's, it's, it's an expression. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 this is an expression. Static it has a it has it's a statement. A, no, it's, it's an expression. Contact is, is, is an expression. You can put it everywhere. We'll see later. Is it uh, only simple X uh, bigger or lower? Uh, you can also run functions. Only. You can run functions. You can do everything with it. Uh, contextually converted to bool. Okay, if it's bool, you can make it, you can use it. Any more question about the syntax? Because it's just a brief. Okay. Now, contracts, I'm just stepping out and just going to tell you that contracts are everywhere. Your program, many times when you program, you you expect the program to be in some state before you do, you take actions, which is a Precondition of, of your program. You expect outputs of your program. So it's the post condition, we can say, of the program. Objects have post <laughs> have precondition and post condition when you work them with them, you expect them to be in some state. And without this state, I will see example. Don't look at me with <laughs> question mark in your eyes. Okay, but I have all these things and I'll just copy it, I'll just skip it. You have contracts. Built in, even if you state it or not, if you even if you see it or not see it, the contract is there. Okay, so and many many times you give it the contract itself because we don't have a, a language facility to do it. We just add a comment, and we we'll say it in a minute. And it's very very important to remember that not all contracts are checkable. It's not we we can check everything and we see examples. Now we'll see examples. This one I skipped. An idea that I decided to. So here we have a language contract in uh, above the function in this case. And so my math square root takes a double and returns a double, finds the square root of the number it got. And above it, we can see that there's the language contract that expects x to be positive before taking. Actually, it should be greater or equal to zero. And the return value as well. This is a contract. Okay, without it, my math square root doesn't know what to do. Simply doesn't know what to do. It's not an error. I'm not going to handle it. The, what will happen? Undefined, but we'll get to it. In the middle of the code, you can see we know that P is not null. So we state it at this point, P is promising P is not null, and we can assign to <coughs> we can assign to it for the points too. And also you can see in the last one. Again, we give it the, the contract in a, a, as a comment, and we expect the, the F length, which is the what, uh, what we got, we expect it to be in size less than one or greater than one in the return. 
Yeah, that's a lot. All right, so it's the contract that we have written in the code with uh, uh, as a comment. Question? Right. So the contract facility, what it does, it takes this all assumption, all assumptions that we have, all these things that we wrote, and just put it into the code itself. So, for example, if we expect the program to be, uh, we don't have it here. We accept, expect that some global variable to be initialized. We can just put it inside contract asset, and we have uh, uh, we can make sure it's a, it's initialized. We don't have to write at this point. I expect the G initialize this too. Also, if we have the front, for example, for some container in this uh, thing, it returns a reference to the uh, element in the container, and we don't know what, what, how to return this reference if the container is empty. So we can state very clearly, not empty. This is my three condition for refer for, for the function front to, to make sure I'm not empty. If you try to call it on front, front with empty, undefined, we'll see later. Do you initialize something here? It's a Boolean extract. No, it's just my, my, my variable. It's a, oh, okay. yeah, it's my library just have it. Uh, I just, check. It's a Boolean variable. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's like you have code here, like, yeah, it's just below it. It's like, it's like code, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not the real code. It's like, like, demo. And the square root, as I said, you can see, I can just put it very clearly in my code in the, in the definition and everything. And as we said, contact asset is an expression, so I can use it before I am, um, before I'm assigning to the reference, to I reference, I make sure that P is not null. What is its value? What is it converted to? The code that I said? No. The value of the expression. This one? Yes. No. Yeah. The value of contract oh, oh. is said. And all this is just disappearing because of the expression of the comma. Yeah, you, you use the comma operator. The comma operator. It's probably yeah. not yeah. a I will take the star of P, but you're using contract assert as an expression. Yes. So it means it you could put it in an F if statement as well. So it means it has some value. No, you can't put it in an if statement. What's the type the contract assert? Yeah. If if you can use it, it's 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 it means it has certain no, it doesn't have any value. No, it doesn't have any value. And they contract assert doesn't have any value, doesn't introduce any value. Get value. What's the static? Yeah, what's the static? It yeah. is this is not a statement, point. this is an expression. Yeah, so. There was not a box whether it should be a statement or an expression. Yeah, yeah. so it's expression. So it's but an it's expression has a type. Yeah, right. the expression Void. has to have a type. Void. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And don't, yeah. don't ask if it grows or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, the answer. it doesn't throw it. No, I'm the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. No, no, that. Okay, so let's continue. So, not always, it's not always possible to, to, uh, uh to have a contract for anything. This line of, uh, uh sentence here is taken from the standard regarding the compare function that you give to saw to, uh, a find. And this function is assumed to have an ordering relation between the elements that it gets. So you can check it theoretically if you have enough time and the values are, we have a finite number of values for the type. So you can build a graph or something and just make sure it's always the ordering, but it's nothing you really going to do. So not everything is a, a checkable in contract manner. And the last one is just a joke. Like you, if you write the write the function of my shares, and you in the post condition you say profit must be true, doesn't you know? <laughs> doesn't go. Correctness is not uh, well, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um. Now I'm going to talk about narrow and wide contracts. So in general, if you have a function, we can take any input. Whatever any input uh, regarding the, the the type it gets, so it has a wide contract. You can get anything to it. And you can do, work with, with everything. If it is limited in some way, in this sense, if you have like integers, but you can't take all the integers. If you have a, 
uh, class, but not all states of the class are um, valid for the function, like we saw in front. Okay, front can take many kinds of, of, uh, of uh, containers, but not the one which is empty. So if you have some limitation on your function to work, it's called the narrow. And very important things to know, if you throw an exception, it's not, it's part of your contract. Okay, if you return an error value or you throw an exception, it's part of your contract. You say, if you give me this value, I'm just going to throw an exception. It's part of your contract. It's not out of contract, all right? So returning error or throwing exception, it's part of your contract. And uh, the last, uh, okay. Question about wide and narrow contracts? All right. So let's take a few examples for what I've just talked about from FTD Vector. If you are going to see talks about contracts, expect many of these because it's the easy one to, easy one to explain. I really try to use another one, but I couldn't find so because it's a very good uh, example. So the operator breakers, uh, round break, square breakers for a uh, uh, for stood vector, for the vector. Uh, of course, it's a narrow, narrow contract because you have to give it a position which is uh, less than the size of the vector. Um, it, on the other hand, is a wide contract. You can give it whatever you want to give it, any kind of a vector, which you get a known result. Either you get an out of bound, I think, the exception, is to the out of bound, or you'll get the value itself. So it is a white as a wide contract. The function front, as we, as we talked about, must not work on an empty um, um, vector. And the swap function, or the, in this example, it's a co uh, move constructor for vector. You can get any, any two vectors and just swap between them, initialize one from the other, and it's a wide contract, no limitation at all. Any question about this? Okay. Very good. Mm, okay, now what happens if you violate the contract? This the thing that we didn't talk about it up till now. So if you call a function out of contract, the, the, what happens is undefined. This is the basic understanding of contracts in, in general. It is simply undefined. Okay, we, so we talk about library undefined sometimes because the library simply doesn't allow it to be called with the values or with whatever. And it might be a language undefined behavior. But the language doesn't say what happens in this situation, but it is undefined. Wait. Yes. Before we ask, you said that the compiler uses undefined behavior cases, you know, to optimize. Oh. Sometimes, yes. And you said, no, it will not affect optimizations. Yes. Probably, yes. <laughs> so it's... There is no compiler developer, so... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the, yeah. com compile... It's very important to understand from, from the standard point of view, undefined behavior, any result is possible. If you want to optimize, no, okay, optimize. The thing, the thing is, if... Um, if I call a function and the function has a post condition that says that the return type is larger than five. Yes. And then I have just a couple of lines. I, I store that in a variable. And a couple of lines down the, uh, the code I have, if the value that I stored before is less than four. Yes. So the answer is yes. And if my, the compiler is allowed to optimize yes. that in for weight. Yes. I can't so yeah. It will affect optimization. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then you should watch talks about undesigned behavior, which is like a whole new topic. Yeah. Very different one, but yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the yeah. one thing to remember is that undefined is undefined. Okay. It's not the, uh, the same undefined behavior because it, um, there's um, poison undefined stick or undefined in the LLVM IR level. But I, I'm talking about yeah. LLVM because yeah. I know it. Uh, more than yes, anything else. It, it's um when you have like a lot of the uh, like uh, undefined behavior that um like um uh, when uh, there's a, a undefined behavior optimization when for example 
um, uh, a static uh, firewall attack. You, like you jump to isn't uh, isn't fine. For example, like it's not the, the thing is you're talking about specific implementation, and I'm talking about the contract with the compiler. Yeah, I I, I get that, but it's not the same. I'm trying to get there's undefined in the standard level, like that uh, it's implementation defined, or no, like uh, implementation defined is not undefined. No. So well, I have a proposal. I have a proposal. Okay. Shaha has actually uh, heard a talk about undefined yeah. behavior in it's what the compiler is. Wait, wait, wait. Shaha prepared the talk. Sune? I think you should work with Ophic and I think you should do the talk together. Because he obviously know a lot about LLVM poison and we all. <laughs> All right, so let's there. Do. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, your oh. yeah. Yeah. Let's not, uh, let's get, let's uh, continue with John. That's about the, uh, the question. No. Yeah. Yes, we, we talked about optimizing, about uh, using the post condition or the precondition to optimize the code. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it would be even because it's not language. Of that's already there if it's already there. Otherwise, it's only library and defined behavior, and I don't think that would be doing well. Actually. Yeah, it's a good point because the, the post condition and third condition, the contracts are library and defined behavior. I, I have a question. In your next slide, you wrote when we call a function out of contract, the result is only. This is only true for precondition. When I call a function that violates its own post condition, the, I'm not. I don't. I cannot control. It's a bug of whoever wrote the function. Not this. It's forcing this undefined behavior on me. Okay. Outside the scope of my control. Okay. I just, I just say what Adi said, and he said that if the post condition is violated, the the who made the the violation is the implementer of the function. And this is something I, I just forgot to ask you in the beginning. Just tell me if it's true. If I have all the preconditions implicitly or, or implicitly okay, and I just invoke the, the function and the post condition was violated, is it for sure a bug in the function? Just take it and just and we'll talk about it at the end. Okay. Um okay. okay. So this line, this code is taken from my own code in Bionics, and we'll see what we have. We have a class called Q Receiver Master, which has a public uh, a member named Set Receivers. It gets a standard list of Q Receiver called receivers. It says the public uh, a function called Start, Stop, and Join. So above this function, inside my code. I have this comment that says that the behavior is undefined if receivers are set after the call to start or when are set more than once. Okay, the, 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 the behavior is undefined. Now, in the code itself, I can show you it's what I wrote. If you really call me again with a, a you call set receiver twice or you call it after start, I simply ignore it. So it is very well defined behavior. But from the point of view, when you call set receiver and you see this comment, and if I have here inside, I have the precondition, I don't have this language feature yet, but I will have it, will be like pre uh, receivers null and pre not started. And the, 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 what happens, it's really undefined. Okay, I, I can tell you in, in my talking, when I speak to you, it's okay, nothing will happen. But it's very, very important to understand that it's undefined in the library point of view. And why is it like this? Why it's so important? Because the other things that I could do, if you call set receivers out of contract, out of, out of what I built this uh, class for, it means that you have problem. You don't understand the class. You don't understand the mechanics. You don't know how the program is constructed. You, know, you don't know something as a programmer. Other possibilities that I have is just like returning bool. But then imagine your code is just like if set receiver, but what do you do now? You try to set a receiver, but you try to do it not in the correct place because you got false. Okay, I can for exception, the same problem. You can do try, set receiver, catch, and then what? Okay, when I say it's a bug, that's what I mean. Like you, you can't handle it. You just say, okay, I wanted to set receiver, 
okay, never mind, I don't do it. it. It doesn't work. Okay, it's a bug. You need to come to talk to me and ask me, why do you do it? Why do you set the receivers only? Why can't you change the receiver after start? Okay, I gave you receivers before start, I gave you receivers after, just drop them or do something. Okay, so this is a very important issue to, to understand that it's undefined behavior, although the code know exactly what it does. Okay, from the user point of view, it's undefined. Okay, I'm not going to break, I'm not going to uh, for, to, to, to just uh, terminate or something, but it's undefined. All right, is this clear? It's a very, <laughs> very important one, this one. All right. Now, if you violated the contract, even the precondition, postcondition, all contracts are set, something must happen, okay? So what is happening? The handle contract violation function is going to be called from by the language, by the compiler, the compiler will just get this, get this function call and, <clears throat> and it will just construct something that is called contract violation object, standard contract contract violation object with all the data that you need to log, to write, to count, to whatever you want to do uh, with the contract violation. All right? So there is an, a default implementation for this function that, compile, that implementers should supply that will probably log the line of code, the predicate itself it was violated, uh, maybe some other, no, maybe, probably few other things that are in this object. I, I in, in purpose, didn't provide all the details about it, but there are few details in the contract violation object itself. It will just log it and it log. Standard error, standard, probably standard error. Like SD error? error or? Yes, probably, yeah, probably. So implementation defines what will be in the function itself. It's replaceable. You are allowed to replace this function if you want. The holder of main, who the one that compiles the test main, can replace this function with, with a user. And it's a globally defined? Huh? It's globally defined, yes. It's globally defined. And it's you have one of these. You can choose to locally change it for no. You cannot choose to locally change it. You can change one for the application. You have only one and one for the application. More, more, uh, I can tell you more. You cannot call this function yourself. You can, just, can, just can't call it. You cannot construct this contract violation object by yourself. Okay, the only chance that you have to, to construct a contract violation is inside your contract violation handler when you get a const object and you can just try to build another one, but you are not supposed to. Yeah. What do you mean the file the, the, uh, that holds main can change it? Is there protection against the library changing it? You cannot install, if you write it, you will just take your implementation at the end. That's a linker error. That's yeah, I think it's oh, yeah. But if, if I'm the only one in the library, that's fine. Probably, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's in, again, it's implementation defined. Probably it will be inserted by default. The, the, the compiler will just edit, and if you see another one, it's a linear. Why not allow changing it at runtime? Why? Because security, because of security issues. Just don't want to someone to pick, get into it. And so it's, it's, it's always set at compiled. Link time. Link, yeah, link, link time. Yeah, link time. I, I, don't, I don't get the security. So. If I can replace it at one time, replace it. you can't replace it. You can't replace at it. At link time. Not, other, not afterwards in some kind of okay. way. I can remap the memory as read write and change the pointer. Okay, not part of the language. But it's not security. Yeah. Security is a stupid answer for this. Okay. <laughs> what? Let me say. Well, Strong well, says that it is very easy to hack. So, so if you take her, if you ask security, then you're in trouble. Okay, <laughs> I'm taking trouble. <laughs> but uh, okay, it's it's an um, introduction to. Uh, so, um, and in any case, we're going to speak about this in Tokyo. Yeah, <laughs> this part actually, because library. Uh, so it's good that I'm asking the question because I'm not going to be there. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, library is gonna like library facility. Library is gonna review the library parts of contracts yeah. uh, in Tokyo. So we should be there. Yeah. <laughs> And Andrea, you should be there as well. Yeah. I'm going to be. Yeah. Anyway, so what? Uh, 
me and others against uh, SB21. This one again, why? <laughs> uh, part of the data in the contract violation object is the file and line that violated the contract. And another thing is the predicate itself that, that violates the contract. So in order to implement it, the binary itself will hold file lines and, and, the, and the predicate itself. And we think it's quite it's easier to get to investigate the binary if you have this data inside. And we wanted to make it normatively like forcing the implementations to remove it if the user asks. We fail. Miserably. <laughs> 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 yeah. yes. uh, this means that they cannot implement it inside the DLL or a shared object because they cannot then dynamically and then. So, the so, so Does this mean that they cannot implement the handler inside the DLL or the shared object because they can be loaded dynamically and then I'll have two symbols? Yes, for example. Yeah. For now. Yeah. It have to be finalized by library, but generally. That's, that's the intention. Yeah. Yes. So now there's no normative way to remove this uh, uh, IP in, in, in the intellectual property details of your code. Uh, from the contract, but all uh, major vendors promised us that it will be there. Notice that if you compile into a into embedded, for example, you don't want all this data, all the line, files and lines to just make your binary very good. So embedded, for example, you, you will have to uh, shrink them. Okay, so it's not something very, you will have, we will be able to remove this data. Which we so now I'll just summarize what we talk. If we have a, a contract violation, given that we have a contract violation handler, we declared an out of contract uh, behavior. We know we now know what to do. The contract violation handler will be called if we uh, violated the, the contract. And if you're in the right semantics. Well, just the second line semantics. <laughs> so I said it to Sequela. No, let me get it. Good answer. Good question is what you know the answer yeah. for. So that was an excellent. That's excellent. Right? That was the, the next. <laughs> the next slide. So we declare the contact violation, and both, therefore we change undefined behavior subset into a defined subset of undefined. Behavior. What we declared, yes. What we declared to what is out of contract and it's very important to understand that we didn't uh, widen the the contract because the function itself still doesn't know what to do with the violation it's not that now we solve no, not, not now that we know how to take square root out of negative numbers or something in this in this direction we, we, and we are still not don't know what to do how to produce correct output with the given input okay but it's not undefined something has happened and when the violation handler finishes, the control gets back to the follow of the function or to the... Excellent okay. question. Excellent <laughs> question. This is the, 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 the next thing. Now, we don't always want to check and to take all the actions regarding the contract violation itself. So we have modes. We have enforce mode, observe mode, and ignore mode. Now the slide doesn't show it, <laughs> and this is the important thing for the next talk. I'll just fix it. But if you call the if the violation happened while you are in in enforced mode, okay, enforced semantics, the uh, global for the global, yeah, exactly for the MVP is global. global. For the MVP is global. After the after post MVP, it will be all all the semantics will be mixed because you don't know. It's already in the no, I don't know. Currently, the, it's either enforce, observe, or ignore. The, what is implementation defined is when to, to apply it. But currently, you cannot mix. With the MVP, you cannot mix between modes. Um, so if you are in enforce mode for your question, and the, violate, and the contract was violated, the handler will be called, do whatever it does. And when it returns normally, notice this thing, when you turn normally, Terminate will be called. Now there is a discussion if it's a bot or terminate. It's a bot now, they change it. We change it to a bot for sure. 
It was uh, implementation defined, they made it a few days ago. Okay, so it's a board. Uh, for, help me, I don't know what the, what the difference is between a board and terminate. I think the terminate because the, uh, it's not a global object and a board just, just a board. So it's now it's a board, not don't terminate? No, but it's, it's, a, it's a better choice because if you are you're connected with the debugger, you can figure out what. I know I wasn't in the discussion, so I don't know what what. But it's either called terminate or abort. It just stops if you're in for in enforce. Now, if you're in ignore mode, okay, the code your contract will be compiled, will be checked for correctness, and once it once the compiler finds they are okay, it will just erase them. Nothing happens. You get no sure. nothing at all. All right, this is the ignore. Mm -hmm. The observe semantics. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the observe semantics will do the following. We just call your handler, return back to your code, and continue normally. And the idea about observe is that once you are in your library, in your lab, you run your code in enforce, you find all the bugs because it's a feature that helps you to find bugs. The program is terminated every time you violate the, 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 the contract. And then you fix all your bugs and then you ship it. Now, when you ship it, you can use ignore if you don't want anything to happen, or you can use observe, and then your function, your hand, contact handler will just observe everything, just log all the errors that you have, and you can get it back from the customer and just try to fix more bugs that you didn't see. So this is the observe what is uh, designed for. Now, when do you want to do it? And this is what the slide shows. I just uh, gave, gave it. Small example here, if you have a function which find edges in images, just draw the lines of the, uh, the edges between things. <laughs> and to run this function, you expect the uh, sharpness of the image, eh, it's supposed to be IM, the sharpness of the image to be above uh, 8,000. It's just a number that uh, said how, how sharp the image is. So you, and you call the sharpness, the function sharpness, you get the sharpness back, but the problem, one of the problems is this, to calculate it takes two milliseconds, which is way too much with, when you want in your uh, production code. So one reason, another reason why not to use the, the uh, precondition in this example, and just eliminate in production, you run it in the lab and everything is fine. All right? And this is the elimination like a compiler of that? Yeah. How does Excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how do we select the semantics? So, the standard say that the semantics. Just before that. Yeah. Um, um, so, what you're saying is that if I'm in ignore mode, the uh, parameters sent to the, the contracts are not being evaluated. No. The yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. So the, you mentioned it this word. The expression doesn't, is not evaluated. Yes. It's just no. being checked for be correctly. And, and syntactically correct. Syntactically correct and all the values, like you don't, you have to have this sharpness definition in this example. You just you so can't write it here. What about like side? No, in, in a few slides. <laughs> okay. So, yes, okay. All right. So, when do we use uh, each of the uh, semantics? So, it's defined as implementation defined. I mean, like the implementations are free to select when and how to use. It might be at compile time, link time, load time. I have no idea how they're going to do it, like when you load your function. And in run even in runtime, you may be able to change your semantics, the semantics of the, of the program. The environment variables is the way to do it. Yeah, that's what I want, but <laughs> I don't know how you how the implementation will just communicate it. If you want it to be like a, a Cross platform, how, how do you communicate the environment variable? Custom building function. I don't know, whatever. So, <laughs> from the standard point of view, it doesn't matter. It's implementation. It's bigger with that. So, standard doesn't go compiler flex, things like that. That's not part of the standard. Yes, we don't define them. We just say it's implementation defined to select the semantics at any point. Once, so long as you can compile with those GCC. And also, I can tell you that if if you are an implementation that decide not to not to uh, give any of the 
any of the semantics, I mean, any the, or not at source and not observe, you just want to ignore everything, you are still okay. You are still a conformant uh, implementation. You can ignore everything at the beginning. Very poor quality of implementation, but you can do it and it will be fine from the standard point of view. And also thing, uh, things like matching, mix and matching between libraries that were, for example, were compiled with enforced, but now you want to ignore or the other way around. You have a, a library that was compiled with ignore, but one, now you want to enforce. Are you, are you, are you mix them together? It's kind of a question for the implementation. You can ask. I'm yeah. not sure it's for this slide, kind of connecting to what Amir asked in the beginning. Is there anything that the, the standard says about allowing the compiler itself to inspect those uh, preconditions static in order analysis. to, like, static uh, kind of uh, semantic analysis Wait, in order to prevent, to optimize, for example? Standard doesn't. I guess it's under enforced. Hmm? The question is, I think the question is, if you're under enforced, does the compiler allow, is the compiler allowed to- The uh, compile time decision, not uh, one. Oh, no, I have, yeah, oh, compiler can yeah. do whatever it wants in the undefined behavior zone. So- Yes, under the yes, if, yeah. if, it, if it can prove it would always be true or false, then it can substitute. I mean, it can do anything that it can prove is the same as uh, the original contract expression. Once you get to undefined behavior. As long as no, it doesn't have a sign. That's not to do anything else. Yeah. For example, like, yeah. Uh, constant, uh, constant form then. So. Right. We will get into con on constant evaluation of contracts in the next few slides ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we get to, to contract. Yeah, constant form evaluation. If the compiler can prove that they could do it. I understand that. No, but I'm but asking the other person. I'm well, asking exactly the opposite. I'm not, if the compiler can prove, is can the compiler assume? that this is actually true. Because if this condition, <laughs> if it's violated, it's a bug. So it's your bug and uh, it's already well, for but, undefined behavior. But that's what I asked before. Behavior. That's what I asked before. And since it, it went on to the handler and the answer is no, because the handler isn't marked nor returned. If the handler is marked nor returned, then the compiler can assume that the, the that it will never happen. That it, that it will never happen because the, the, the otherwise the handler wouldn't return. But mm -hmm. if the handler is allowed to return, then it, the compiler can okay, I I'll just talk about two things that were raised here. One of them is like, can we as the programmers see the, the semantics and ask the compiler, ask the, the abstract machine, what is the semantics now? And if it's in force, I would like to branch into this code. And if it's GNU, I would like to go into another one. Can I ask the abstract machine what is going on here? And the answer is no with exclamation mark. Okay, you cannot query the, 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 the semantics of, of the compilation, of current compilation, because we don't want the code to change or to be, or to, Act differently depends on the Let semantics. Let me explain why that is a bad idea. What? That is actually a, kind of a bad idea because um, if the experience with asserts is that um, often we want to say, if asserts are enabled, I want to do extra checks. So, uh, and, and those extra checks may require extra variables. So I, I, I have a variable. I'm, Maybe I'm only defining it if I have a search enabled. I'm definitely only updating it if I have a search enabled. And I'm only checking it inside the asserts. Okay. And this way, the compilation is different between asserts enabled and disabled, but uh, it, it, it facilitates the same end result. So, and, and what you're saying is, unlike the physical class philosophy, which says, I'm giving you the rope. If you want to use it to shoot yourself in the foot, that's fine. Uh, uh, what you're saying here is, no, I won't give you the rope because you may hang yourself. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're getting something that for the past couple of years, the whole world is at war with the C++ language exactly because of uh, but 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 so yeah. But before we, we before we get yeah. before we get into this, I'll just answer your question. Remember that the the target of this facility is to find bugs. Uh, now, if you branch based on the semantics, you just create more bugs in one time, and you don't find other bugs in, in the in the other branch. If I'm using it incorrect, yes, but, but, again, but it should yeah, it shouldn't change your code in the in the way that you can branch. Uh, I, I, I just gave you an example. 
I, I, I have a variable that I need, if, if I want to check in the contract, I need to update it. No, that doesn't answer. Like, like this one, no, like this one. No, no, you can no. call a function, inside the function you can do whatever you want. No, 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 because the, 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 the I need to update the variable before the contract point. I need the variable to already be updated at the contract point. Okay. But I don't want to spend the time updating it if I'm not going to validate the contract. Okay, so, so so I need an an if if the contracts are being enforced and if they are I'm gonna and then it. you miss the opportunity the opportunity to to fix your code in the case they are not. Oh, but if you're, let's say you're using the contract this is a better example than the precondition. Mm -hmm. Then in the ignore mode that statement is going to be gone and the optimizer is gonna say okay this is so I'm using the use the the comma operator even more. No, because then it's I'm using variable out, it's never used by hardware. It's not the fine variable. No, no but I need to define the variable anyway because it is so low. It checks the semantics of our function. Let's 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 give it chat to go. So so as as we said the the two you know the two issues now I can I store. I cannot query the uh, the semantics in my code and the other one uh, what was it which is okay and, and we're talking here like the semantics are, ch are selected are cho are selected by the implementation a, a question on this side yes Steven, uh this affects also also the contract assertion contract assertion contract assertion yes yes, yes of course <laughs> yeah like Not only the pre -informed, no 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 contract contract in general pre post and contract assertion all of them together. Are there any invariants? Or you need to state it twice? I get an invariant. Invariant for what? There are precondition, precondition, and invariants are actually the same condition, both as a precondition and a postcondition. Like in general, in contracts, the precondition. It's syntactic sugar for defining the same test before and after the first frame post. No, I don't get it. Like. You, you have a, you have an invariant, a condition that should always be true. Yes. So you say I want to verify that before I enter the function and after I. Okay. So invariant for classes is part of the post MVP. Okay. You can say this this uh, the the usual example is this uh, container is always sorted. You just have you have invariant in the class sorted, always sorted. So before and after every function, you get the, to be checked. So it's okay. invariant for classes. It's post MVP. I'm not going to talk about. Um, sorry, you already did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not now. No, 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 nothing was said really. It's ideas. Um, okay, this is we talked about it. No transformation inside the contract itself because it will be um, wrong in the bug area. Like the if you have a function budget, that take the post and just the, the return value, just take uh, less 1000. It's wrong, it's informed, you cannot change the return value inside the post condition. It's simply, simply not allowed. So when you say informed, that's undefined behavior. No, it's not compiling, it's not a program. It's like mm -hmm. it's like you wrote um I don't Shakespeare. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, not, it's not allowed to be translated into a binary. This is informed. Yeah. And also, I gave you another example here. So if you see the, um, for example, you have a, a container, your own container, you say, I want to always return something in front. I want to make sure, doesn't matter what I'm returning a value. So I'm constructing a default value whenever you call front, if it's an empty one. So here in front, I'm just having a, <clears throat> sorry, a precondition that says it must be not empty, or I can add a T, just add to the to the container T. This is again ill formed. And the reason it's this is one is ill formed because the function add is not const. But what if I implemented empty such that it actually mutates the object? With const here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe if it didn't have const. Wait, if it wasn't const, would this be? If it wasn't that? with const, you could you put you can it's call still it still informed. It, it must be const. It must be const. Okay. You, you cannot and mutate. Is a uh, qualified member function. Yes. You still, I like, can use a mutable member. You can. Or a static member. You can. Okay. Okay. Or static members, you can. You can. Also global. Also global members are allowed to be changed. Okay. Global static allowed. Technically possible. Technically possible. Allowed. No. 
There's a huge difference between allowed and technically possible. Technically possible, it says, well, I can't prevent you, so whatever. And allowed means it's supported. Yes, it's supported. It's allowed. It, 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 it's it, not it, IFNDR. Yes. It's not, yeah, it's not informed. It's completely okay. Yeah. If, if it's a globally, it won't be. Uh, yeah. But what's the difference between so changing the global in the function I call from the condition mm -hmm. and you changing the global in the condition? You are allowing one and disallowing the other. That's why I okay. again you can you can change the global directly in the precondition. Yes, you can change the global the global, global variable. variable. Yeah. So it's okay to change the global variable. It's okay to it's okay to const cast const cast the the function or the because variable the can change it. This is shooting your yourself in the foot. Okay, you can do it. Then it's what, what if you if you want another story? I I just. That's good result. I wanted to have here at the end of the precondition, the not not the other way around, because by default I wanted to have a mutable here. Just just to add a mutable. Like I know what I'm doing. I wanted the condition to change whatever, it's mutable, it's allowed to be. And I feel <laughs> because it's wrong. But in this case, I, I was convinced that it's wrong. Okay, the, one of the great things in the in the standard that you get it, you, you have an idea, you share it with other people, and they just Shout at you and when you can fix the thing. Why was the reasoning for my team? Because it's simply wrong. You don't want, if you change something okay. in the code, you change you the change program. The you can change the program state. Yes, it basically it's for side effects. But for side effects, it's allowed because it's a global, locally, you cannot. No, you, you could say it's not allowed, it's undefined, but I can't prevent you. So, you know. No, I can prevent everything. It was no, not prevent. <laughs> you keep it might be hard for the compiler to find out. Yeah. Sorry? It might be hard for the compiler to find out that you do uh, um, something which is informed. And then it, it would be informed, no, there's no signal. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But then the question is, is, is the concept of why should we allow, and, and you say, for side effects. And then the question is, but we don't want side effects of him. What? Okay. What was the answer? <laughs> Logging. Logging. Yeah. You will get to it. It's way tough because we need <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So side effects. Side effects are, are something that is not preventable within within the contract. So you might see memory allocation in the allocation. You might see logs. You might see statistics. It might change the way the the program behaves, and it's okay. That that's what I have to say. So it's okay. You can prevent it everywhere. Sometimes you want it, and sometimes things can get quite messy if you have like logs which are getting bigger and bigger because you are in enforce or observe so things are just getting worse because of the contract but you cannot prevent it uh, everywhere so back it's allowed back in the bug checker yeah back in the bug checker it's it's a very very <laughs> very important comment by in bug because everything that we talked about it's code and we write bugs exactly. even in the bug checker you said that you don't I have many bugs. <laughs> I, have five. <laughs> I have like five for the next version to solve, but not all of me. Anyway, so we, it's a code. Contracts are code, like every other code. We can introduce bugs. Introducing bugs in contract means that we either don't find other bugs, like we, we cover for bugs, real bugs, because the contract allows, allows it, but we are not all the other way around. We just save it there's a bug when everything else is okay. No, but that's not the oh. worst kind. The, the worst type from, from but, experience is uh, when the bug is in the logging mechanism and the <laughs> bug you're trying to log happens once a month. In the yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So, but again, it's a, it's code and code okay. have bugs and yeah. it's like okay. everything. Okay. Very, very yeah, good. Okay, now about uh, constant evaluation of contracts. Yeah. Now, sometimes the compiler can know uh, the value of the contract, the, the contract itself. And you said, you asked about, um, about optimizing. So one of the examples that after you asked, I just remembered, you may have in your code contract a third false at some point. And the question is, the compiler should eliminate it or not? Okay, contract a third false, very sure, nothing, it, Will never happen because it's a contract. It should never happen, and the answer is no. You should leave it there, because you probably put the the, the contract itself for for cases this function is going to be called, and you 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 don't you want to know something. Yeah, you reached a place that you shouldn't be there. 
So if contract of service is something that you don't want to eliminate from no, the code. That, that interesting question is about contract of service. True. Contract of service, true. I guess you can, yeah, yeah. I guess you can, yeah. yeah. I guess you should be able to eliminate it. Yeah, probably. Because it's it, it's always there. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. No, we're using a contract of service false. Mm -hmm. Well, the nature of function is called, then you should probably use a free call instead. Yeah, probably using it inside a function, but probably asserts some solid method, not just right functions. Okay, in the in your else part, you just use contact as first false. Okay, and I never want to be there in the else part. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's legitimate to leave it there, even for you can eliminate it. Um, so the constant evaluation is done in in a way <laughs> if the expression itself that is being calculated, okay, there's, there's a path that the compiler takes to make sure the, the expression is constant. So it takes this the entire path. Now it makes sure it's con it's it's a constant. It goes back to the beginning and then try to evaluate constantly the the, the contract. That's the rule. <laughs> Okay, so you just, you just dive into, make sure your con your expression is constant, and then you evaluate the the, the, <coughs> the contract itself to make sure it's constant. It's constant as well. If it's not constant, it's still false. And to evaluate. And to evaluate, of course. Evaluate and get the value. So this is what happens in uh, and and it's uh, it's divided into the, the semantics themselves. So if you are in ignore, so no evaluation at all of the contract itself inside the constant, constant expression. If you are in, in observe, you'll get a, a warning in the diagnostic and in false, it will be simply ill-formed. There are two cases. The contract could return false for the evaluation or it could be not constant. If it's, yeah. If it's not constant, then it also makes the program ill-formed. Yes. If you are, if the, the expression that you try to attach a cons, contact to it is, is not constant, then uh, it's informed if you are enforced. Is it clear? Like I try to, was very, uh, okay. Virtual functions. Virtual functions are not closed in the standard. We, are, we don't know what to do with them. And <laughs> simply, we don't know what to do with virtual functions. We had an idea. Who? D, D. the D language. Uh, uh, do have something, uh, I don't remember the exact rule, it's something like uh, you need to expand uh, uh, in one direction and then narrow in the other. I just, I just showed the problem itself and ideas to solve it are welcome. I thought that I have an idea how to solve it, but again, I was pushed back. <laughs> yeah, usual. So view one of, of, of a virtual function is the view that you have a, you have a class, it's a base class, you have a, a, an abstract function that attached to it some condition, pre-x, post-y, and from this point of view, if you are a user, so if you try to call the base class foo function, doesn't matter how it's implemented at all, this condition must hold. That's one view of the thing. You don't know what the implementation is, you have a call for a base class, which is a pure virtual function, post condition and precondition must hold. Is it clear that this is one view, very narrow view, very, very strict view. Like I cannot violate this rule, what doesn't matter whatever. Okay. Another view of this, or the implication of what I've just said, that is that if you have a class car in this example, and you have a function drive, which get a speed, and you say, okay, the precondition is the speed must be less than 100. Okay, this is the precondition of the base class. Yes, it's a base class here, and as we said earlier, nothing can break it, must be less than 100. Now you derive from this class, you implement another car, which is a fast car in this example, and you want to make the contact wider. You are allowing to drive 169. I don't know where the number is. Yeah, I know where it's from. Anyway, you are, you are allowed to run to, to drive faster than the base class. Now, this is not implementable if you have this view. But life show us, shows us that we want it. We really want to have a, an ability to widen the contract you, of the base you class. You can't call through the a pointer to the base class and pass uh, 102, but you can call the derivative yeah. and pass 102. Well, the it's... Yeah, yes, 
what, what, what? The, 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 okay, if you want, I can dive into it a bit. That if you call it via the dynamic type, the, one of the ideas is if you call it via the dynamic type, like, like the base class, then you have to, uh, to, <laughs> you have to uh, be in contract, yeah, of the base. If you have a point or you call it via the, the static as the real, the real type, the, the concrete type, then you don't have to, to, uh, to call it. But again, it's, it's a problem because there are cases, there are examples, but when you have the dynamic type and you just want to, to, to enlarge it, to widen it in real life, it may be uh, something that you thought it's the idea. And then someone took your, your class, derived from it, and show, and I can show you that it just make it larger. So one of the so one of the ideas is so it's not solved yet. We, I don't know how to solve it. I don't think that I have had any good way to solve it. And, and now with what is going to be in the MVP probably, but virtual functions are not allowed to have any fun. That was the that was that was the original idea, but we showed that it's a problem as well. If the base loss is there. that was yeah. one of the ideas. Yeah. The only way you can fix it later is not by allowed. saying that right now it's not allowed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's no, the only way you don't keep it in the MVP. Minimal viable contract it's meant to guarantee that we we'll have some kind of contract in 26. <laughs> you don't have to handle all there the is, cases. There is a paper in the yeah. standards in SD21 that says, what do we need to do to make it happen? And one of the decisions there, one of the ideas there, it's to make Irpon everything that we don't have consensus to. So we don't have consensus to solve it, so it's Irpon. That's it. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, throwing violation, throwing contact violation handler. I don't, I don't know if I got too much into this. Um, the violation handler that we saw earlier in the in the talk may or may not throw. Okay, and it means that if it throws, I mean, oh yeah, <laughs> it means that if the violation handler throws. It allows you as a programmer to continue execution in situation of contract violation, which, as I said in the beginning, I really don't want to allow it. So a contract violation and the flows just give you the ability to continue execution and trying to handle this contract violation, and I don't want it. I try to, and you know the continuation. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they want it, they simply want to, to be able. So now my latest attempt, it's a working paper, 3101, um, that is written now, it was published two days ago, that at least give me the ability to reason about, about the contact violation, give me the ability to, to write my code in such a way that if I ask about contact violation, is it growing or not? I can do other things, I can do different things. All right, this is what I want now, because if it's forward, I'm going to do something, and if it's not growing, I'm, not, I'm going to do something else, and I got pushed back for this as well. By throwing, this is the only way to get control, control back to the column. In enforce mode, down. yes, in enforce mode, this is the only way long to go down. back. Please. Yeah, long jump, leave it, leave it aside. Uh, so, I don't think you can use long jump Reliably, no. <laughs> anyway, so mentioned in this context in the replay. Oh, it might be. <laughs> so the the latest attempt is to be able to ask what is the contract violation uh, uh, no except marking and to to reason about it in the code, like query the abstract machine about what it was decided. And there's a real pushback. I'm not sure I understand why, because, but I'm not going to get you into it. If you are interested, I'll just show you the paper and I'll show you the mailing and everything that you want to get into it. Um, I'm, I'm collaborating with a, a guy named Adman Gashpar, and we're trying together to push this idea uh, to get, to, just to know what if, we have. If the market does not accept, why not go farther and market does not be done? 
What the violation handle? Yeah. Why should it? No, there's no difference between marking you no know, return and using the enforcement. Yes, it is. Termination in the word abortion is uh, defined within there. Returning from uh, no return is undefined. Why? How can you return from the? But abort abort you, itself is one well, moment. You always return from the, the from the contract and handler. It doesn't return. No, not from the contract. From, from the, the contract handler. handler. From the handler. From the handle contract violations, you return back. Return back where? To to the code that called it. I will give you. I won't. But if you're in force, what? Oh, what? so it depends on whether you are in force or not. You're returning a gender bond. Yes, yes, exactly. You're returning when you're bond. That's that's how it how it, how it works. Okay. It's not the handler itself that called the bot. Okay, it's the, you return when you're bought in post mode. And of course, if you don't fall, if you fall, so you just simply unwind and get to whatever you get in, in, in the point. Yes. I think this is all I had to say. And there are two questions. Yes, yes. Um, you didn't convince me why there was no uh, room to leave an, uh, a message. Oh, because your your contract handler will just write down whatever happened. No, no, it will not. Uh, it will write what what it knows. It knows uh, where in the code the problem was, but it doesn't even know why the condition failed. It, it, it will give you the condition itself. The predicate itself, you will get it as a no. text. You get the, te the predicate in the text. Yes, but not what the value of the of the variables. More is. Really not. And what's more important to me, um, usually when I write an assert, I have a reason why I wrote it. Yeah, and you want to and I dump that into the, the when I have an assert with a string, which is I try to anywhere I like program, uh, I dump that into the string, and that gives context. Everyone can open the source code and see the condition. But why did I put this condition yeah, in? That's right. That's, that's, that's right. But okay, I'm just and the same, and it's always right. I just so, okay. So I, people do uh, uh right. They, they do uh, uh x uh, uh is greater than three and and um uh, three yeah this thing. <laughs> you were supposed you were supposed to divide by now uh whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you what. There's a one uh, standing paper to add a message to the to function which is being deleted. Delete and the reason, like let's say as in static asset. Like, delete should have a reason. Delete should have a reason. Yeah, it's a it's a standing paper. It's very uncommon to delete something which is in the copy constructor. But yeah, you uh, just delete. You just mark the function as deleted, and you have a you have a reason. It's a very nice paper, very small paper. I'm definitely uh, wanted, so I can push push the comment for the uh, contract itself. We have a comment. I will go it will be further. It will be post MVP. Okay. <laughs> That's That's right. Right. I will push it further and say I also want to be able to pass parameters to where? <laughs> to the login. So uh, no, you will not get it. <laughs> That's for sure. And one of my first questions were can I use, can I just pass anything, not just the contract violation uh, object itself? Can I pass anything? And the answer is no. <laughs> Um, we need to create a function to generate your log session. I know, but yeah, no, 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 that's that's what we end up doing, right? Because the, the thing is, no, because then they'll say no, because the, the, the string that you pass to the contract the, to the contract has to be cost expert. Uh, and they will say that. Um, the, the thing is, uh, like, like I said, I want to know. What the value of x was? I said x has to be uh, more than three. I need to know what value of x was yeah, when yeah, it was violated. Yeah. I tell you more. I wanted to do the handle contract violation to be a template function, so I can just pass any no, type, that, any type that I that's have. Technically, very different. Yeah, but just leave it aside. There was another question. Uh, the the create post conditions are in the prototype, right? Yes. What are the reasons that they are in the prototype and not in the implementation? Good question. And then the second question, I guess, we cannot overload on that. With different... Uh, yeah, with yeah. different conditions on like having some kind of a concept of, oh, if I like uh, test this condition, then go there, otherwise go there. No, 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 you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Can. 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 So that, 
That would be the same end up, I guess. We ended up with functions that have restrictions, requires to require one to go here and another to go there, plus reinforced with many. No, but you, you cannot you cannot overload because it's a runtime. Okay. Sure. Okay. So yeah, as, for, as for the first and question, yeah. which will have to remind me. Why is it on the prototype and not on Yes, the... yeah, very good question. I didn't talk about it. The question is why why do we have it in the prototype? So the the best thing to do with precondition, especially, is not blaming the function that was called with the incorrect value because she just declared I cannot work with these values. So the best thing to do is to blame the caller. So once you have it in the in the definition, in the declaration, you can you, you can simply just pass this code into the caller and check it there and not even calling the function itself. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get you get the, the real one to blame. Does that make me mental oh, so so the reinforced they are basically part of the public contract of the function it must be externally visible. Mm -hmm. There's the another the pre, the pre the pre could be uh, could be uh, evaluated either at the call site or in the function itself or both or both yeah <laughs> it's, allowed, it's allowed to be evaluated more than once yes correct so I guess it is an uh, ODR if I compile and, with one header that says something one thing and then compile another CPP with the same prototype but but different pre and post yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it does not, it yeah, it's form. not part of the of the overall resolution. One, one, it's the same, but it they, they are the same. It. But it cannot be checked. It, it cannot be checked if it's true, yeah. It, it can be checked yeah, if you, yeah. name what, what, if you put the, 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 the conditions into the name map. No, you don't. That you could, they, that you can, because you have two different functions if you make a thing. I tend to guess that this could be, which is not, no overload resolution. So if something was changed in the current post, then recompile for some post your projects and not for the entire project. Again, I sorry. I tend to think that it would be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have a solution, but it might be a common bug mm -hmm. in the future that the print post were changed in the header. Yes. And then only part of the project was recompiled, and then you have the new print post being uh, used in some of your CPP files, but not in others. But if if you are if That's you are the the if, 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 if you are uh, you don't the same that. header so by the uh, shared object. Okay. And then you mm -hmm. compile some of your code, and you didn't recompile the shared mm -hmm. object. Uh, but this is true. This is always true. If you have an header file, yeah. in signature, in a way, uh, I guess that the ODR is, is is in a way, yeah, it is true. Is is a bit more. Um, uh, you find it easier. I, I mean. When, it's easy, but if you, if you change your header, so you need to compile everything, it depends on the data. That's it. But uh, maybe this is related to we have a question from the audience uh, about virtual functions. Yes. And I think it's really totally related to this. Uh, what is the problem with always evaluating the contracts according to this dynamic type? So, according to the dynamic yeah. type, like the base class? No, no, no. To the, the concrete to, type. To concrete and, like not the call site, but at inside the function, which is the actual yeah, like virtual. Here, like no, just no, no. Okay, the question from the audience was why why we have to check the base class? Eventually. No, why not check the precondition for the virtual function at yes. the uh, instantiation of the actual concrete virtual function? Yes. Okay. Point. Okay, that's what I want. The question is why not checking. The actual function that is being being executed, like being invoked. If you invoke function, then you use it. That, that's the question. And this is what I asked again, I asked myself. And the answer is that you really want to be able to reason about this thing in static analysis and make sure it's true. If you cannot guarantee the base class is going to happen, this one doesn't have any meaning in this context. It doesn't have, it might be, it might not be. It's a condition that you, Simply don't know because so it's, not an, it's not an implementation problem. It's a logical. It's a logical decision problem. Decision yes, it's a logical decision. Yes, yes, yes. Well, my my idea, which was again not very not received very well, it's like here in my well, no next one here in my uh, condition here, I just simply call the pre of the base class if I want to or not. Okay, it's, it's my decision. Like, if I want to call the base class drive function, like I'm, I'm able to, I'm, I'm allowed to call the base class, and the, the base class would not be called if I will not call it explicitly. 
So I wanted to do the same thing with the precondition. I want the precondition of the base class or not. That's the idea. Very simple. I'm when I invoked the precondition, the postcondition, I checked if I wish to. Again, it will not work here. Okay, it simply will not work here. You have to reason about status of the uh, precondition, the postcondition, even if you don't know the implementation. All right, that's answered. Just yeah, I think you answered, uh, but you didn't answer my original question about why the post condition is not a violation. Oh, of the great. thank you for reminding me. So, post condition is it a bug in the implementation or something else? Any ideas? No, no. no. I think it's a bug on other side effects in the portal yeah. which are not the implementation of the function. So, side effect like what? Like in the function, I'm using some global variable or another thing that is oh, okay. somewhere which is not part of, I, I mean, I'm getting into a state which out of this state, the, the post condition is not met. Yes, so well, you should have like- uh, it's very, very uh, close, yes. Uh, it's a question, it's a good question because I thought about it quite a lot. <laughs> and the answer is if you are relying on user's code, like you get the fun virtual function, you get a pointer to virtual function, you call this function. And this function doesn't do what you want. If you are relying on other code outside, which is not yours, then the bug, well, might be not yours in your code. Okay, it's, code, it's always fun. not your bug, and it's actually the best reason to allow your handler to throw an exception because I write with super robust code. Okay, I don't trust uh, uh, somebody else's function. Okay, I know I never violate their preconditions. I don't trust that if they violate their own post conditions, my program needs to turn it. So I will catch that exception from when? <laughs> for my handler. From from my then handler. if it was yes. uh, originated. This is actually a very good reason to why to handle contract violation. Yeah, why no, we want to stop it. Yeah, should be able to throw it. Yeah, for them. I mean, if, if it's something that's testable, but obviously you rather you uh, you you are testing it in a post, then you can just test that part of the function body. The uh, whatever you get back from that third party. Yes, we've contact with yeah. then then that's your bug. Yeah, you can look at it like this. But if you if you get, for example, a, a, a compare function that is not uh, ordered correctly, does not order the elements correctly. So you actually you don't have nothing to do with it. But you can in a post. Well, yes, in the end you are you are just the your post condition is sorted. But you get the function that does not know how to set the relation between two elements correctly. So your post condition will catch it. You will, you will not be thought of. Never mind. Okay. So, yes, one reason to have exception, you know, in contra in the hands, another reason is to enable failed tests. Like you want to test something, you want to test that the violation itself is. Violated the contract that you write, you want to test that it's really doing its job. So you give out of contract values, and then the contract violation handler is called. And then in your framework, in your catch, in your check test framework, you simply catch this uh, uh, exception and you continue on. And I have an what? <laughs> and I have an answer for this. Just try and observe or replace your your handler and just do whatever you do when you catch. Just do it in the handler and not. But leave it aside. Any other question? Yes. If, if you have a throwing handler, uh, are you risking of uh, throwing from functions that are no exception and have, have contracts? Yes, you'll get terminated. Like simple, like all the world. You'll get Whenever you get it, but without all of the context you need to debug it. But that's always true. You, you get if you have a no except function that that violated its its uh, contract, then you you'll get uh, and the contract handler itself is throwing. You'll get back with the exception and you hit the no except barrier and you terminate. It's like someone who will stop. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it will terminate. And now it's time to say the, the leak was small. If you have a no except function, it must have a, a wide contract. So you cannot have a no except on a narrow contract function. I said the leak was small. That, that's terrible. That's the leak was small. What? But that's terrible. Why terrible? If you have no except the narrow contract, you will eventually hit this one with an exception. Yes. Yes. But so the Lego school does not allow you to put no except 
on the day of construction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said I will not say. It. Any other question? Because we didn't have enough. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, it's all mine. All yes. the photos are mine. Yes. Okay. Wow. Thank you all.